In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the front wheel hub and bearing assembly on this Ford F-350. Let's get started. Let's remove the wheel. Some trucks will have a center cap over the lug nuts, in which case you can use a little pry bar or screwdriver, get in here and pry this off. And now you can use a 21 millimeter socket and remove all eight lug nuts. Remove the wheel. Use a 21 millimeter socket and remove the two bolts that hold the caliper and bracket assembly onto the knuckle. Support the caliper and remove the top bolt the rest of the way. Take the caliper off the rotor and don't hang it by the brake hose. Put it on top of the leaf spring so that it doesn't pull on the brake hose. Now you can remove your rotor. Hopefully yours is not stuck. If it is, you can tap between the lug studs to break it free. We have to remove the locking hub, and to do this, there's a large snap ring here that you can grab with some pliers, wiggle it out. With that set aside, you'll be able to pull this hub out. Carefully set this aside. Inside the hub, if you look carefully, you'll see a snap ring, for which you will need some snap ring pliers. Get these in there expand the snap ring and pull it out. Careful so that you don't pinch your fingers when you do this and careful so it doesn't go flying. Save it, we will be reusing it. Unless it's in poor condition for whatever reason then you'll have to replace it. Behind it is gonna be a washer. You can use a magnet to take this out. Another little spacer, we'll take this off as well. This is plastic and another washer. On the back side, you'll see four mounting nuts that hold the wheel bearing onto the knuckle with some studs. We'll have to remove the mounting nuts and then we can take the bearing out. These are supposed to be 21 millimeter mounting nuts. I'm hammering a 20 millimeter on because mine are pretty rusted in there. Try to break these free. All right, there's one. These are very tight and you do need quite a bit of leverage for these. I'm going to spray some rust penetrant in here. Try to get it worked into the threads. This one pulled the whole stud out, that's okay. Let's turn the knuckle around, go to the other side and do the same thing. At this point, the wheel bearing should come out. Now, whether you need a hammer or not, it'll depend on your situation. Although this one's fairly rusty, it is not seized. So that's great, and I have to push the axle through while pulling the wheel bearing out. Use a rubber mallet to tap the axle. You can also use a pry bar right here to pry the wheel bearing off a little bit further. Now there should also be a backing shield of some sort here. Mine is, well, long gone. And there it goes. Slide this out, and there's your wheel bearing. What I'm going to do now is clean off the area that's around the knuckle here, and I'm going to remove this grease because it's very old, and I just want to pack it with new grease, but if yours is fresh, I guess you could leave it. However, cleaning this will contaminate the grease, so regardless for me, I'm gonna to have to remove it anyway. So I'm gonna clean this up with a very fine sanding disc. I don't wanna remove material, I just wanna get the rust off and flatten this off. Then of course we'll coat this with some anti-seize, pack it with grease, and put in the new wheel bearing.
I'm going to take a clean glove, pack this with some grease. Make sure you use grease that's rated for wheel bearings. Get some on the axle shaft as well. It does ride on some needle bearings right about here. And some on the splines. I'll add some more on here later, but just wanted to give it a thin coating for now. On the outside, on the area you cleaned, apply some anti-seize. You can use grease if that's all you have. It's better than nothing. Basically, you just don't want bare metal so that it doesn't continue corroding and rusting in the future. What we have to do now is install the studs that are gonna hold the wheel bearing onto the knuckle and we just have to thread them in to the wheel bearing. I put a little bit of grease just very lightly on these threads to allow it to slide in smoothly and that way I can more easily snug this down because I don't have anything to grab onto these with other than just pliers. Now these don't need to be extremely tight because what's happening is when you put the mounting nut on this side, it's actually gonna wanna pull the entire stud as you tighten and put torque on these threads. So it will actually tighten both ends of the stud, but obviously you still wanna make sure that this is tight. So just do your best with pliers, snug it up. While I'm here, I'm also going to pack these needle bearings in here with some grease because this is where the axle rides. I want it to be very well lubricated for as long as possible. This is also why it was important to use wheel bearing grease in the knuckle because that grease will actually kind of sling around everywhere here and uh, do its job. If you had your backing shield, you'd take it and put it on now. I don't, so I'm just gonna slide this right over and into the knuckle. You want to make sure that this is fully seated. Right now it's not, that O-ring is kind of hanging up. So I'm just going to wiggle it. You can tap it with a rubber mallet. Just if you do, be careful not to tap something that uh, you shouldn't tap like studs or the axle. There we go. Start in the mounting nuts. Let's bottom these out in a cross pattern now. The torque for these is 133 foot-pounds. Just like bottoming them out, we're going to torque them in a cross pattern so that the wheel bearing can seat evenly. All right, they're all torqued in a cross pattern. You can double check them if you want, but I'm certain that they're all good. Now let's install the washers and snap ring that hold this axle in. Install the main washer first. Then there was this piece of plastic. Then another washer. I put some grease on those, that way they can stick to each other and it'll be easier for me to line everything up. And lastly, the snap ring. Get it almost all the way in. And then what you can do is just tap it the rest of the way with a hammer. That's it. That just locked in. Everything spins very freely, so that's good. I'm going to add some grease to all of these splines as well as the axle. This is where the hub is gonna go on and lock in when you're in four wheel drive. So it's important that everything is lubricated properly here. You don't need a lot of grease, but you need some in all of these splines. Take the locking hub, line it up with the splines, and push it in. Wipe off any excess grease. Reinstall the ring that locks it in. Push this all the way in to make sure that the locking ring can seat, which it just did. Now if you wanted to test the functionality it actually works. On the back of the hub we're going to put anti-seize so that it doesn't rust in the future. 
especially on the outer ridge and the inner ridge. This will also prevent the rotor from seizing up on here and it's going to prevent rust, like I said, which is important because if it does rust, it'll swell up and it'll push the rotor out and you'll have issues with your brakes, such as brake pulsations and uneven brake wear. Because I'm reusing my rotor, I cleaned up the backside where it mounts on the hub with a light scuffing pad, just so I can remove the rust and any imperfections that were there. So I can mount nice and flat, slide it over the hub, slide this all the way on using some brake parts cleaner, clean up any fingerprints and grease you got on the rotor. Take the caliper and reinstall it over the rotor. Line it up with the two bolts and have your bolts ready to start them in. With both of them started, snug them up. Torque these bolts to 166 foot pounds. Okay, now let's get the wheel on. Now let's put our wheel back on. Start on all eight lug nuts, bottom them out in a cross pattern, and also in a cross pattern, we're gonna torque these to 148 foot pounds. One hundred and forty eight foot pounds in a cross pattern. Here we go. If your truck had this, don't forget the lug nut cover or center cap. And there you have it. Take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.